Hi, my name is Bethany Saul, and today we are going to be talking about different ways we can import illustrations into InDesign when we format our books. So there are a few fun ways that we can drag our illustrations in here, and I am going to be covering that for you today. If you're looking for more behind the scenes tips, tricks, documents, or you want to download this template, go over to patreon.com slash Bethany Stahl, where you can do that in the self pub squad or workshop squad. And if you're looking for more information, go over to Bethany slash classes, where I have all this information over there just for you. For real, it's just for you. Like you're the only person you. I promise. <laughs> no, but to be completely honest, I still use my own directory nearly every day. I don't remember how to do all of these things off the top of my head. So quite frequently, I look back on my own resources. One of the videos I watch every single time and one of the Patreon resources I use nonstop is how to create a link in your ebook. So there are great resources over there. And I don't think anybody could ever hold all this information all in their head at once. So we are going to be using some illustrations from my book, See the Sharks. So these are spread out in two spreads. So there's a few ways we can go about importing these. First, I can just click and drag and drop. When I do that, I can put it here, right click, go to transform scale, and then scale this down to the right size. sort of play this little balancing game and put my illustration in there. So what you can see is this purple is my safe zone. So everything inside the purple is good. So a little bit of Frank's nose is outside of it, but that's okay. Um, that is good for now. So that is one way how to easily throw an illustration. Now let's go over here to this little X frame. So what I can do is I can drag throughout my entire bleed area and drop and I'll see this big X. Interesting. So I'll take that same illustration and throw it inside of that X. But you gross, it's ugly. So what do we do? We right click it and go to fitting and then fill frame proportionally. Hey, and it looks perfect. It's cropped. Everything's great. So depending on which way you prefer, you can do that way. Just be careful that you never touch this because if you do, you'll throw your illustration all around all kinds of crazy. So try to avoid that little circle unless you want to throw it around all kinds of crazy. Otherwise, um, that's perfect. So those are the two main ways you can place illustrations and Neither way is right or wrong. It's just a preference in what is quicker and faster for you. So now let me delete that and let me show you something else that's really cool. So with this frame tool, let's go to an ellipse. So your ellipse will go ahead and be all disproportional if you just drag it around. But if you push your finger on shift, it makes it a perfect circle. So I'm gonna make a perfect circle here. Let me drag this over and let's grab that illustration again. So it is again all crazy pixelated. So I will this time drag with that little thing because I want to find Kalisha. Ooh, or maybe I just want to find this little cute sea turtle. So I could have it like zoomed in on a little guy like this. Or I can go back to fitting and fill it proportionally and I can zoom over and have it just be this guy if I want a circle illustration or anything of that sort. So I can go ahead and make that circle smaller, bigger. So it's really cool of what you can do. And now if I didn't have a spot illustration and I wanted one and my illustrator didn't do that or I didn't do that, I could go ahead and use that and have this cute little illustration there. And that's a really fun way if you wanna add stuff um, on the about the author page or anything like that. So you could even do that with an author photo. So I can go over to 
a photo for an author photo. I can go to fitting, fill frame proportionally, and now I have a little cute cropped circle of me and my angry cats. So <laughs> it's, it's really cool. Um, I definitely would recommend playing around with the frame tool and just be careful about that center option. So if that center option keeps throwing your illustrations all around, I know a lot of you have struggled with that, then just go ahead and scale it down like I showed the first way, because that's a really easy way to make it fit. Um, and then if you feel brave enough to try the frame, uh, go for the frame. So now what you're up against is just formatting all of it. So we want to put in that frame and let's go back to an illustration, go to fitting, fit it proportionally, and there we have it. Now, one of the things I do wanna say is if you go up into view and you click over print preview, it's going to make a certain area gray. That's our bleed. So what it is doing is showing that that gray zone will not be printed. So that's a really good way you can see if you're cutting off too much of your illustration. So if anything important is in that dark gray area, you will need to be a little bit careful. So I like to turn on over print preview occasionally just to double check that I'm doing everything right. Now let's play around with adding text. So we'll add text here and this is not the real words to my book, but let's just go ahead and say, Frank was a happy shark who had a baby sea turtle friend. Okay, so now we can go ahead over here and we can make our font bigger, we can change it, and up here in fill is where we can change the colors. Now for white and black, I do recommend using paper or registration, and that is going to make your text white or black. You can obviously do different colors if you'd like, but for now we are just going to stick with white and black. Now this is a very key part of formatting on InDesign. When that purple line shows up in the center, that means you are perfectly centered with the page. Now some of you may not want to be perfectly centered, so you may want to kind of be over in this area. That way you have plenty of space by your inner margin. So whichever way you want, that is a good way to go. Now let's just copy and paste that text box and put it over here. Now you see green lines. Green lines means it is perfectly aligned with other created content. So while this box is not centered over here, it is perfectly aligned with this one. So if you hold shift, you won't move it off of your little line right here. So I'm gonna hold shift and drag it to the purple. So now those are perfectly aligned with each other and they're aligned with the page. So pay attention to those guides and use them. Another thing when you are placing your text is when I move this, I can see my X and Y position. This is really important if I decide that looks good so what I can do over here is note here, my X is 0. Point, let's make that 75, and my Y is 0. 0.8. So let me go ahead and put this on my next page. I'm just gonna throw this in the gray space and make a frame and throw in another illustration Go ahead, right click, fitting, fit proportionally. Now you can see I accidentally forgot my bleeds in here, so let me just. So now I have that. I can throw my text up here. Oops. I need to go to arrange, bring to front. So if you're not seeing something, it could be behind a different layer. And how do I know if those two are in the same spot? Well, I can click on it up here and see, okay, X. 0.05, y 0.8. So x 0.75, y 0.8. Now those are in the exact same spot. So make sure you are doing that with your book. There is nothing more annoying than when 
text seems to be off in books. So as you can see, all of the text on the left is perfectly aligned. That way there's no weirdness. Now, if you have a book where text is all sort of fun and in different areas and it's formatted to be that way, that's good. That's okay. But if you are formatting it to be very organized and perfect and square, use those key things for it. So at this point, you should have the basics of InDesign down, be able to create your document and be able to throw in your illustrations, do some fun stuff with your illustrations, throw in your text, do some fun stuff with your text and be able to create a full and complete book. Now there are a bunch of different ways on how to lay out your book. I always say there's never a right way to publish. There's never a right way to format. That is completely up to you. Of course, there are standards. If you are interested in how I lay out my books, go over to InDesign, download that template, and you will be able to see what I put on each page as well as tutorials on how to populate that information, such as filing your copyright, getting your LCCN number, and things of that sort. Otherwise, I do have a video up on YouTube where I go over the front content in my book and what I recommend. The other thing I would ask you all to do is just go check out books. Grab a few of your favorite children's books. If you have kids, if you don't have kids, you may have some in the house. Um, so go grab those, see what stands out to you, see how other authors do it. There's going to be a slight variation in every single book based on how they do it, but everybody's gonna have that same information right at the beginning or the same information right at the end. So try to stick to the standard, but make it uniquely yours. I hope this video has helped. I hope this InDesign series has been helpful. As questions pop up about InDesign, this series will grow. So this is going to be something I am consistently working on. So even if you don't see new InDesign videos for a little while, they may be coming in a few weeks. So definitely stay tuned to this series as it is always going to be a work in progress and sharing new things and sharing other information. So I hope this has helped. If it has, give it a thumbs up and let me know which way do you prefer to place illustrations? Do you like just dragging them in and scaling them or do you like using the frame tool? Because I, I don't think I have a preference. The frame tool I think is definitely quicker, but there's something satisfying about just sizing it perfectly right. <laughs> but anyways, let me know which way you prefer and I will see you all in the next video I release. So again, if this has helped, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Bye.